Bethlehem's exploration teams have found reserves in the Maggie Zone, some 50 miles from the Highland Valley. This sun-baked, eroded terrain conceals over 200 million tons of copper ore. The company's reputation for pioneering revealed itself again in this discovery of the Maggie Zone. Other mining companies had explored this property previously and found nothing. Bethlehem discovered a large and important reserve. Back in Highland Valley, the Houston mine is swinging into full production adjacent to the older Jersey mine, and a major and exciting happening has occurred nearby. Another ore zone has been outlined, the JA zone, named after Chairman J.A. McClellan. And the early results are exciting. The pins mark the location of a series of test holes being drilled to determine the full extent of the ore body. A view of the J.A. zone. Not much to distinguish it from the rest of the valley. But a partial diamond drilling program revealed a minimum reserve of 300 million tons with an average grade of 0.45%. The drills reach down. Hundreds, possibly thousands of feet of drill cores will be brought up each one telling a little more of the story. Pat Reynolds, Spud Hustis, and John McClellan share the excitement of the continuing discovery. Long experience has equipped them to read a core sample like a book, and Spud Hustis hasn't forgotten any of his skills. Miniature ball mills in the lab break down the core samples and prepare them for analysis. Days of tests, and finally, the evidence, conclusively establishing the J.A. zone as a major discovery. Chairman John McClellan carries the action to Bethlehem's head office in Vancouver. Launching a new mine is a gigantic undertaking, costing millions of dollars. An exciting time in a mining project. One last look at the visual evidence and the geologists' reports, and then Bethlehem's board of directors assemble to hear the full story. The model shows drill holes reaching down through the copper-bearing areas, a strong and persuasive argument. Even at this stage, much of the big copper reserve remains to be outlined, but the already proven 300 million ton figure demands immediate action. A number of technical details to be explained. And then the board gathers to evaluate the evidence. Authorizing a multi-million dollar expenditure is no small responsibility. McClellan answers questions, presents estimates of development costs, and the board elects to go ahead with the development of the JA zone. Another mine is about to be born. In the surrounding area of the mine, life remains unchanged. Fishermen and hunters still enjoy their recreation. So will their sons and grandsons. Kids grow up and thrive in a clean, sunny environment. And the irrigation sprinklers still water broad fields of agriculture. Cattle continue to grow fat on the upland's grass. Ashcroft, with an uncertain past, now looks forward to a thriving future. The town is the dwelling place for most of the mill employees and their families, and it's a bright, clean, growing community. No one would deny that mining in the Highland Valley has made most of this possible. Each mine employee creates three new jobs for people in the town and surrounding area. Unmarried miners enjoy the attractive comforts of Bornite Manor, built and operated by Bethlehem. Ashcroft today is quite different from the scene at the turn of the century. Ashcroft, the small railway stop, early gateway to the caribou, 